Welcome to part two of our Curtis OX5 engine rebuilding videos. In this video we're going to cover the actual power head of the engine, the parts that make the bang, makes the noise, where the power comes from. First off the pistons. Four inches in bore, notice hemispherical head. Even in 1912 the hemi head as we now know it was nothing new. Conventional connecting rod big end and these connecting rods are paired on the crankshaft so there's one with its buddy alongside of it. The cylinders on the OX5 engine are individual, eight of them of course as it's a V8. The cylinders are cast from one piece and on the outside of the cylinder is brazed a monometal water jacket. This is the water inlet for the water jacket, this is the, the uh, water outlet on the top of the cylinder. This is the only part of the water cooling of the engine is actually the cylinders themselves. Over here we have a rig set up where we are testing the actual water jackets of these cylinders. We're testing them to 10 pounds a square inch to make sure there's no porosity in any of the water jackets so as when we actually start the engine up we don't have water and antifreeze dribbling all over the airframe. I'm going to show you this test in process now. And we put 10 psi in the uh, water jacket. As long as it holds that for a good 15 minutes, we're happy that the water jacket is sound. We now have the eight cylinders and piston assemblies installed on the engine block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number one at the rear of this engine. The cylinders are held down by eight studs and nuts. Initially on the OX5 they used to hold the cylinders down with eight nuts at the bottom. They found they had a few problems with the barrels cracking so Glenn Curtis went over to this stud arrangement for four of the hold down bolts and the spider in the top. So now there's the four long studs and the spider holding the cylinder down on the top and the four bolting down the bottom. This little device up here is the mounting for the valve gear. It's also the water outlet for the top of the cylinder. And down here you can just see the water inlets all manifolded together. This contraption on number one cylinder back here is actually the valve gear and that will be the feature of our next video. What we're going to do now is to turn the engine over so as you can see all the pistons and the connecting rods as they connect into the crankshaft. Now we've turned the engine over in our stand and you can see the crankshaft and the connecting rods. The connecting rods, two alongside each other, are connected into the same journal as we can see here. Here is number six, number five, number four and number three. I'm now going to turn the engine over so you can see eight and seven and one and two. And now we can see number eight, number seven, number two and number one. Welcome to part three of our series of videos of rebuilding the Curtis OX5 engine. In this video we're going to cover what is probably the most interesting and certainly unique part of the Curtis OX5 engine. Glenn Curtis wanted his engine to have a hemispherical head and overhead valves, which was kind of state of the art for 1914. So he had to come up with an interesting valve gear arrangement to be able to operate the valves on the individual cylinders. I'm now going to show you on the table here the individual parts of the valve gear, then we're going to show you the valve gear assembled on the engine and you'll see it operating where it will all make a lot more sense. On the left hand side is the simpler part of the valve gear, this is the exhaust valve components. There is just the push rod, the rocker arm, the rocker arm pins that it runs on and the spring. The spring is interesting, it's a barrel shaped spring. Nobody really knows why it's a barrel shaped spring, but that's the way it was designed. 
On the right hand side here, we have the more complicated part of the valve gear, which is the inlet valve assembly. This consists of this H mechanism here, the pins that it runs on, the very lightweight inlet valve spring, the main heavy spring, which is actually used to pull the inlet valve open. So the inlet valve system actually has two springs. Again, it will make a lot more sense when you see it operating in a minute. This yoke assembly you see here, and this bar, is part of the Miller modifications to the OX5 valve gear. A chap called Leslie Miller came out with a much better valve gear system for the OX5, which increases the RPM by about 1 to 200. That doesn't sound much, but bear in mind this engine only runs at 1400 RPM, so that meant quite a bit more power. Blue Swallow aircraft are actually rebuilding this Miller valve gear, so as uh, operators of the OX5 engine out there now will be able to have the benefit of this modified gear that was designed in the 1920s. Now we're going to go over to the engine and we're going to show you the valve gear working. This is the interesting part. Well here is this complicated valve gear assembled on the Curtis OX5 engine. First off let me show you the cam followers. The cam followers are concentric. The exhaust valve follower is within the tube and the tube on the outside is actually the inlet valve follower. What I'm going to do is turn the engine over and you'll see the cam followers moving. As I said earlier, people often affectionately refer to the OX5 valve gear as a bunch of mouse traps. Well, look at it. It makes a, a good mouse trap, I can assure you. The best way to show you this is for me to turn the engine over. You'll see the rocker arm here operating the exhaust valve. You'll see this tube here being controlled by this large spring, which is being pulled down by this spring, which will be opening the exhaust valve that I'm pointing the pencil to at the present time. We'll then show you another shot so you can see the main inlet valve spring operating as well. Now I'm going to show you the inlet valve operating. The inlet valve is pulled open by this large spring here, which works on the back of the camshaft and not on the lobe of the camshaft. And you will see the H yoke here pulling the valve or compressing the valve as it's pulled down by this pull tube here. We're now going to move the camera around and we're actually going to show you the main inlet valve spring so you can see this operating on the follower. To finish off this video on the Curtis OX5 valve gear, I'm just going to show you the valve gear drive mechanism. Here is the gear on the bottom, on the end of the crankshaft. This crankshaft gear drives the main camshaft gear, and they are ratioed so the camshaft turns at half the speed of the crankshaft. This little box you see down here is a digital protractor, and that's what I've been using to actually set the valve timing and the mesh of these teeth. This hole you see here is where this gear goes in 
And this gear is the gear that drives the single magneto. The Curtis OX-5 only has a single magneto, unlike later aircraft engines that have two, and we'll be covering the magneto in a later video when we cover the accessories on the engine.